Welcome to our series, Lexington Remembers. Today we are, first of all, I want to thank uh, the Edwards for filming this and all the work they do in filming all of these programs that we have. And I would like to introduce uh, Susie Berry, Chairman of the Lexington Celebrations Committee, mm -hmm. and Paul Jenkins, who is a board member and has been a board member for a long time. So, to start off with, we want to look at this Lexington's uh, Town Celebrations Committee. Could you just, either one of you, give a brief summary of what the responsibilities are or what are the goals of the Town Celebrations Committee? We are a um, committee under the auspices of the Board of Selectmen. Mm -hmm. We are all volunteers. Nobody on this group is paid in any way. Um, and we're actually, we have a large committee um, which consists of 11 members, which all have voting privileges, and we also have a subcommittee of up to 15 members. Right now we only have five people on that committee. Um, and we were formed to carry out duties um, relative to the appropriate celebration of <clears throat> Patriots Day, Memorial Day, and Veterans Day, um, which includes parades and ceremonies and, and other events that we do. Okay. Let's look at some of these holiday, I mean, these celebrations and mm -hmm. so forth. Because I don't, as I said, I don't think people realize what goes into it. So let's start with Veterans Day. Okay. All right. What do you usually do as a committee, or what are your responsibilities? And how many people of the town and the, are involved in this? Well, Veterans Day um, is unique because it always takes place on November 11th. Whereas Patriots Day is usually the third Monday in April, and that date can vary. We don't always celebrate it on the 19th. Okay. Um, and Memorial Day, as you know, that date changes as well. So Veterans Day is always celebrated on November 11th. Um, we start the morning out with a parade. But during the parade, we make several stops at the monuments um, mm -hmm. in town to lay wreaths and remember those who have gone before us. Before we get to the, to the um, in the past, we've been going to the Battle Green for ceremonies. Um, but now we uh, go into care after we do the parade, we go up and around the green and, and parade back down to Cary Hall. Um, we have ceremonies inside Batten Hall. Um, in, in most recent years, we've instituted an essay contest um, among the middle school and high school students where they're presented with um, several essay questions which they're asked to um, answer. We also, for Veterans Day, um, just last year brought back the Veterans Breakfast. Um, it was very successful. Um, that's typically held the week before Veterans Day. Um, and for this coming year, it will be the first Saturday in uh, November um, in Kelty Hall at St. Bridget Church. Um, and we have a speaker and a breakfast. And it's just a, it's a great, great event to get all the veterans together, you know, camaraderie, swap stories, and things like that. Yes, because last year was the first year that we did this. Mm -hmm. you, you did this. And it, the veterans were so appreciative. Mm -hmm. It was, it was just wonderful to see. Yes. And you had the help now. The food came from? Uh, Nelios. Yes. We worked with Nelios, um, and they, um, they provided a wonderful breakfast for us. Yes. Um, we had a speaker, um, uh, Representative Hank Naughton, um, who was a state rep and also serves in the um, Army Reserve, came and was our speaker. Uh, we also had cards that the uh, elementary school children made mm -hmm. in class, and we presented those um, to the veterans. And several local merchants were very generous. Um, and gave prizes towards, um, we gave out several door prizes. And it went over well. I mean, they were just thrilled. Oh, it was great. It, it was great. I would say the hall was probably three quarters full, um, and mm -hmm. this year we're going for it, hopefully to sell out. Good. Good. All right. Veterans Day. Let's go to uh, Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. What does this committee do for Memorial Day? Well, you know, that's the day where the graves, as we know, nationally, the graves are decorated to one of those that have gone before us in, in all the wars. And we make it a point to visit uh, every town cemetery uh, where there's veterans there. And wreaths are placed at various um, graves, including a wreath that's placed at a uh, Medal of Honor recipient in the Monroe Cemetery. And then uh, Sam Doran has expanded that. He's given history of various people that are in there, which I never knew, but he had a, he had photos mm -hmm. placed up on easels and he took everyone through uh, on various uh, 
people that were in there, and, and that was the first time this year, and I think he's going to hopefully repeat that next year. And the parade goes and you know it goes that that way on Mass Ave, and then it's brought up to um, other monuments. Uh, for instance, uh, the uh, in front of the police station, we have a monument for um, an officer that was killed in the line of duty in Lexington in 1967. Um, there was an officer Hodgson. He was killed in a cruiser accident on Route 2. So there's a monument in front of the police station in honor of him. So then after the wreath is laid there, it moves up to um, the USS Lexington Memorials next to the Buckman Tavern. And then it moves into the old burying ground where a wreath is laid at the grave of Captain Parker. And then onto the battle green itself for a ceremony there and a wreath laying at the flagpole. So it's quite it's quite extensive, and it covers just about everything. And it's, it's a, you know, it's always a beautiful day, and it was this year. And I think this year was one of the high, highest attendance people I saw, as far as people coming to see the parade. Usually, these parades are, early on. There's been more people in the parade than there was watching them. Not this year. No. This year was a very impressive amount of people, in my opinion, mm -hmm. that were up in the center and followed this entire proceeding. Well, I'll agree with you so, on that. I was very mm -hmm. pleased with the right. number of people. Mm -hmm. No, it really was. It was. It was. It was really nice, and it, and it felt good to, to, um, to see that. Right. Really and I think it's important to note too that prior to the parade, I'm not sure if people are aware. That's right. Um, we do at 8:45 in the morning. We do stop. The fire department ha also has a memorial in front of their station, their main station on Bedford Street, um, to those members that have passed in line of duty deaths. And so we stop there. Um, and lay a wreath and have a, a very short little ceremony with them, um, with whoever's on duty and um, what members come back for that. Um, and then we travel up to Westview Cemetery and we do a, a wreath laying up there in a ceremony. And, you know, I'd, I'd be remiss, Mary, if I didn't mention all the, the groups that have been so great to us over the years that are involved in these parades. On, you know, Veterans Day and Memorial Day, we have two buglers from the high school band who are with us for the duration, doing taps mm -hmm. and echo, and they do a beautiful job. Um, we're very fortunate to have the Lexington Minutemen who fire volleys for us. Um, this past, as Paul mentioned, this past Memorial Day, we laid 15 wreaths because um, mm -hmm. we had those five extra in Monroe Cemetery. Um, and so we're very fortunate to have groups like that in town that support us and support what we're working towards. And I also think it's, uh, I'm impressed with the young children who carry the wreaths. Because yeah. Because they, it, it's, Gives them. We get lots of volunteers from um, the Cub Scouts and the Brownies and the Girl Scouts and the Boy Scouts through town um, with the wreath laying, and that it's a big help to us um, because you know the veterans for the most part are they're getting older. It's getting a little bit more difficult mm -hmm. for them to get around, um, and the younger veterans they want to stay kind of in the background. They don't really want to be out in front. But it is it's educational for these young children to be carrying the wreaths, and they know you know they know. Mm -hmm. are beginning to appreciate Memorial right. Day and so forth. It's not just, quote, a day off from school, a no. holiday. It's no. not, and uh, I think that's what the Celebrations Committee has done, has really informed, educated mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the citizens of this town of the significance of all of these holidays and so forth. And they just might think it's the parade and that's it. Mm -hmm. The amount of work that goes into planning these affairs, these functions and so forth, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. And I think it's an educational tool. For well, for instance, right now it's June, um, and we're probably halfway through our planning for Veterans Day mm -hmm. in this yes. coming fall in November. Um, we're probably an eighth to a quarter of the way into our planning for Patriots Day next April. You're always planning for another event. It just it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. Well, we get inquiries and letters from units that march in, for instance, Patriots Day Parade. They send it in their inquiry about the next year, almost the following month. We're just getting mailings, and which is great. They're interested in coming back the following year, and they don't really wait till the first of the year to tell you that. They're telling us almost right off if they're interested in coming back. So, right, We've been talking about these various celebrations that we have, and Patriots Day keeps coming up. And some people may think that, well, Patriots Day, all the committee has to do is put on the parade, so to speak. And there's a lot involved, and a lot of your committee works, many members of your committee work very hard mm -hmm. 
to make the whole Patriots Day uh, celebration. So would you be willing to share with us all of the things that go on surrounding Patriots Day? And what are some of them? It's not just a parade. No, it's not. It's not. Um, there's, as we said, there's a lot of planning that goes on. A lot. There's a lot of meetings that go on. Um, we, first of all, we could never do any of it without the full support of the town. Um, without the full support of the Board of Selectmen, the town manager's office. We get incredible support from the police and fire department. Um, we'd be completely lost if DPW wasn't there to <laughs> handle everything they need to handle for us. Um, and the, the Department of Public Facilities. Um, because whenever, for the most part, our events are held outdoors. However, we always need to have a backup plan in case of weather, which has happened. Um, I think it was seven years ago now, we had to cancel an afternoon parade for yes. Patriots Day. First time ever. Um, everyone thought it was going to be awful, um, but we survived. We learned a lot that year. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's just a lot that goes into the behind the scenes planning. Um, on the committee, most of the members are um, in charge of one specific area. For instance, Paul is in charge of our vehicles. Um, Sandra Lucente is in charge of our floats. We have people who are liaisons to the scouts um, and handle, um, we have parade ambassadors that carry the banners because um, mm -hmm. we have outside businesses that help sponsor the parade. Um, I mean, I should say at this point, we are a town committee. Um, we do have a line item in the town budget. However, that amount of money does not even come close to covering um, what we need to cover in terms of costs for our events. Um, and so we do reach out to the community for support. Um, and we've had some um, you know, wonderful relationships with local businesses that have donated to us in, in support of the parade and what we do. Um, and that, that feels good because the groups that come to march um, in the afternoon parade, some of them come for free and some of them don't. They have significant costs in terms of transportation to get here um, and equipment and uniform upkeep. Um, some of them you know, are just looking for a stipend and others are looking for some serious money. Um, so it's, it's always a challenge to, to, to meet that, but you know, we've done pretty well meeting it over the years. So Patriots Day as a whole for us, yes, that's... Um, you don't sleep much. <laughs> no. You do not sleep much. Um, and it starts very early Monday morning um, with the reenactment. Um, committee members, um, we facilitate, help facilitate the um, battle reenactment. So the committee members are typically on the battle green between probably 4 and 4.30 in the morning, um, helping out in um, facilitating with guests and things like that. Um, and from that, we flow right into the morning parade which steps off at 7.30, um, and then right into the morning ceremonies, which are on the green following that. Um, and then you might get a half an hour break or an hour break to go grab a pancake or two, one of the wonderful pancake breakfasts, and change your clothes, because typically you, you've dressed really, really warm for the reenactment. Um, and then in the afternoon, it's warmer, so you need to dress lighter. So you change your clothes, and then we're in East Lexington by 10.30, 11 o'clock, setting up for the parade. Um, the parade... We line it up in order, starting at Mass and Maple Street, and it goes back as far as it needs to go. Um, this past year, there was a point where the front end of the parade had just gotten to Mass and Wortham, like mm -hmm. by the town pool, right. and the back end of the parade was just leaving Mass and Pleasant Street, the Rotary Wilson's farm. So the parade does cover the entire length of the town. And it, that would have been a wonderful thing to see from the air really if we had had a, an aerial yeah. shot. I would have loved to have seen that. Um, but I'm impressed time and time again from, as Paul was saying, our groups. Um, and we have long relationships with many of the groups that come to us um, and that they continually say, we wouldn't miss Lexington. We love marching Lexington. Um, this one always takes me by surprise when they say, you're one of the best run parades around. I'm like, really? But we work really hard at it, and we're, we're proud yes. of it. We're yes. proud of it. Um, some of the deep relationships we have with the units, for instance, is um, Norwich University has been coming and marching in Lexington for over 50 years. Mm -hmm. um, they had an alum that lived in Lexington that always wanted them to come and facilitated them coming. Um, and so that, they came, I think, almost for 50 years straight, then had a few years off, and, and then they're back with us. Um, the Immaculate Heart of Mary Band out of Still River, um, under the direction of Brother Peter. Brother Peter grew up in Lexington. Uh, he grew up on oh, Grove Street. Connection. Yeah, All he grew right, up on Grove right. Street by Esterbrook. Because um, okay. I always wondered, why does this band come to Lexington? That's why. Um, the Worcester Fire Pipes and Drums. Um, our fire department reached out to the committee oh, yes. right after the big Worcester Fire, that, where they lost oh, six members. Right. And they said, we'd like to give them something fun to do. 
They have played at so many funerals. We love the Lexington Parade. We'd like to invite them. Um, and so they have been coming every year, except one year they weren't able to make it due to staffing cuts. Um, but they come every year. They love to come. Mm. They love the camaraderie with the Lexington Fire guys. Um, so that's great. Um, I just learned this year, New Liberty Jazz. The guys, the, the New Liberty Jazz band on the uh, fire truck. Yes. One of the guys grew up in Lexington. Well, was that why? Yeah. I, I believe it's Jim grew up in Lexington, so like we'd never miss it. You know, and you don't yeah, realize. Connections you don't even realize. <clears throat> no. It's become a tradition. And then you I mean, find out afterwards, and, you know, you say, well, why didn't we know that earlier? Well, somebody knew. I think yeah. it just gets dropped along the way. But, you know, and to a lot of people, you know, I check back with some of our Lexington-based groups and say, how are we doing? You guys march a lot of parades. How are we doing in terms of other parades? And they, they say, you're one of the, you know, the best run parades. Everybody loves to march Lexington. You know, and that was evident mm -hmm. back in 2000 when we had the 225th right. anniversary of the battle. Right. And there were so many British reenactor groups, if you remember, yes. that came. And that after they did the reenactment, they all marched across the green because it really meant something to them um, to be in Lexington, to be on the battle green, and to be a part of all that. Well, you know, that was the year they had the encampment at Lincoln Field. Yeah. So yes. they needed to put them up. So they all camped out in Lincoln Field. There was probably 700 of them, they estimate. Yeah. So when wow. the British did the actual, uh, the regulars did the arrival on the green for the reenactment, it was waves of them coming on the green. So it probably was almost that way that many years ago in 1775. They, it, was, it was unbelievable to see. It was probably close to 700 of them that marched across the green. I mean, only a certain amount of them took part in the, the actual battle, but then right. the rest of them just marched across. And, right. They staged them on Mass Ave, and after the battle was over, they all yeah. just marched across. They did. You know, and it's so kind of... That was probably pretty realistic, when you think about what, probably what right. happened then. Right, right. But though, that was... We knew it was going to be good, because that many had come into town to do that. So that was yeah. pretty rare, and I don't know if it ever has really been able to repeat itself since, but um, you, you have that, to, was, that was really good. You have to be really careful, though, not to become complacent, um, because we live here, and it's, you know, the history is right here for us. And people right. travel from so far away to, to come and see it and be a part of it. Um, but the interesting thing as far as the parade is concerned is we have something new and different every year. Um, so it's really easy to kind of stay engaged. You know, this past year we had the Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile. I mean, that one was just kind of a whim. I said, you know, I'd, I'd like to get that. So I wrote to them and then about a month ahead I got an email and said, yeah, we're coming. It's like, oh, to Little Lexington, you know? Then you had the L.L. Bean. L.L. Bean. We had the L.L. Bean that boot, one. yeah. Yes. Yeah, because we're the beaniest so town in America. So, if you could get things to spice things up from year to year and make it different, people can't say, well, it's the same old mm -hmm. parade. Well, it's not. And no. they can't no. say that because it's not the same old parade every the, year. Well, the best yeah. problem I've ever had, and it, it wasn't even a problem, was this year we had the Londonderry High School Band from Londonderry, New Hampshire, and they've never been able to, we've wanted them for years, and they could never <coughs> march with us because New Hampshire has the following week off from us for school vacations, yes. so the kids are in school. But because the parade was on Sunday, since it was the 300th anniversary as well, they could be with us. And the parade's in motion, and I'm making my way uptown, you know, in our little golf carts. And um, it comes over the radio of, um, we're, we're, we can't get around the Londonderry Band. They're marching side to side. Now, Mass Ave, you know, yes. this was down by Monroe Tavern. I mean, it's pretty wide down there. Like, we can't get around them. They're marching 10 across, 10 or 12 across. And it was like the best problem to ever have. I'm like, oh, this is fabulous. But then as a committee, we got really concerned because the parade route goes down Harrington Road, which is, you know, much smaller. I'm like, how are they going to do that? But there's such a professional organization, they just give a command over their headsets, and the band just condensed, and they went down Harrington Road, and then widened out again and condensed again. You know, and so getting groups like that are just amazing. They've performed on the Great Wall of China. They've done two inaugural parades, the, you know, the Rose Bowl. Um, so getting a group of that caliber that wants to be in Lexington, you know, it's just, it's, it's a good feeling. Right. They'll be back. I think they'll have to just somehow well, I, work it out, but they'll, they'll come back. Right. And I'm impressed with the number of townspeople. I mean, as you know, the population is changing uh -huh. and there are a lot of new families coming to Lexington. And to see them on the green in the morning, mm -hmm. and they want to see, they want to know the history. They, and I, I think that's very important, that they, they don't just move here. People are not, you know, they want to be part of the community yeah. and see what is Lexington all about and what is this Patriot's Day.
program. So well, forth. you know, we all lead busy lives, and it's very easy to just kind of take it for granted. But you know, the one right. thing is, this town does stop every April and and celebrates, you know, right. its roots and its beginning, and it's it's wonderful. It's a wonderful feeling. I mean, I don't know if you've ever missed Patriots Day. Very few. I very I very almost very I missed. Very I'll few. say one and a half. Okay. There was the year right after we were married, and um, my husband's uncle owns a bar in, or owned a bar at the time in Brookline. And so he, my husband wanted to go to that other event, as we call it on the committee. Um, and so we went to the other event that happens on Patriots Day. And I said, you know, I really have to get back to Lexington. So we drove, and we got back, and I saw the end of the parade. Because um, it just didn't feel right, not being in Lexington right, on Patriots right. Day. Right. Um, and then 14 years ago, Tommy, my youngest, was born a couple of days before Patriots Day, which I kind of worked out with the doctor. Um, but I was home on the couch, watching it on TV, because I had set, set it all up, given you guys all the paperwork, and I'm watching it, and um, I'm kind of yelling at the TV, like, that's out of order, and this and that. Nobody, I mean, nobody knows except us when something doesn't go right. 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 Yeah, so I think I've missed, like, one and a half, maybe. Well, just the crowds you get, even on days where the weather's not so good, and we have some pretty cold, raw, days sometimes mm -hmm. on a Patriots Day, if, but when you look at the crowd of people up in the center watching the parade, there's a lot of people that feel the same way. It isn't right not to be there, right. regardless. So no matter what the weather, you know, for the most part, uh, it's very, very, very well attended. Yeah. You know, when you get a nice day, well, you can bet, you know, you're going to have, you know, very large crowds, and then when the weather isn't so great, you still have very, very respectable Mm -hmm. Crowds in the center of town right. watching the parade. It just doesn't, um, that hasn't changed. Well, talking about weather and influencing things, remember when we had the Veterans Day that it poured yes. rain, and then we just could not have the parade, we could not have, so we moved into Cary Hall. Yep. And ever since that time, we have had services in Cary Hall on Veterans Day. And yeah. it's, it's nice to see the veterans they are in the hall and they are appreciative of what is being presented and so uh -huh. forth. I think it's, it makes them feel comfortable and it's, right. it's nice to have it out on the green and everything, but sometimes you want the intimacy of being yeah. together. And I, the, the intimacy of the hall is wonderful. It's a fabulous yes. hall and the it high is. school band up on the stage, is, it's just majestic. Yeah. It you really know, is. It's wonderful. And everyone can hear and they're warm. And You know, I'd, I'd say I think November weather can be more unpredictable. We did March of Veterans Day in a snowstorm once. That's right. It was a light snowstorm. Um, but yeah, it makes it a better feeling. You can, you can hear everything and everyone's truly appreciated and, and right. valued. And that's part of what it's about. Well, getting back to Patriots Day, that's kind of the day you want to, you want to give the town a, um, you want to give the town a fun day, and everybody needs, you know, to be able to come together and, and again, people from outside town and even outside the country come to it as well. So, you know, everyone deserves a great day. And it's, to me, um, seeing everybody enjoy it and have all this fun is, you know, that's my reward, is okay. being able to do this yeah. and allow, okay. and just let everybody just enjoy this and, and see history being uh, made and remade, right. and it's just, you know, everyone's in a great mood that day, and it's just so nice to see everybody really get a kick out of everything that goes on. And then when we have these new units in the parade, we're really trying to see everyone's reaction to it, like the mummers in the- Oh, this year the mummers are in, in the afternoon parade. Yeah. And you know, all the reaction is everybody saying that, and again, the um, Londonderry band is just mm -hmm. to be able to have these nice interjections. You know, right. in the, in a, you know, we're not sure ourselves what they're going to look like, or we just know they're going to be good. But then, how good? And then when they arrive, it's like, oh my gosh, look at this. The, the reactions is a big part of it. Yeah. I remember the year that the um, women's hockey team got won the gold medal in the Olympics, and um, we honored Vicki Mo Session that year in the parade. Oh, yes. And to see her come up the avenue in the convertible, and she was sitting on the back, and she was seeing people she hadn't seen in years. You know, and then fast forward probably 10 years, and um, we honored Kathleen Riley, mm -hmm. who grew up in Lexington, went on to have a career in the um, Navy, um, was working in Washington, D.C., and she was named, named Navy Reserve Officer of the Year. 
And so she came back to Lexington. We honored her in the parade. And I remember her jumping out of the convertible when she saw someone she hadn't seen since like elementary school or middle school in the crowd. And just the reunion they had on the side, you know, then she jumped back in, you know, and the parade kept moving. But that type of unexpected mm. joy, and it's just, it's wonderful to see. It's yes. absolutely wonderful yes. to see. You know, well, Mary, you were on the uh, float this year. Yes. The We Are Lexington this year was the theme yeah. of the parade. And we tried to encompass people who have been part of the fabric of the town, not necessarily right. out in front. Um, the kind of behind the scenes people, all ages and, mm -hmm. and it was everything. Very nice. And so what was that experience like? It was really nice because we were all <coughs> talking on the float to uh -huh. one another and now why are you here, you know, and we discussed and they were very pleased to be, Yeah. and I was too, honored to be with this group of people who have contributed quietly uh -huh. or whatever to the town yeah. and the meaningfulness of the people. That, and everybody enjoyed it. I mean, but the reaction from the, the crowd must the, have been The wonderful. reaction from the crowd and the reaction from within the group yeah. that was there. The interaction was really fantastic. Yeah. And it was nice oh, to yeah. see. And it sure was. It really, that was, uh, that was a very nice gesture. That was, that really worked out well. Well, as a committee, we didn't feel, you know, it was a significant year. We were celebrating Patriot's Day and the 300th anniversary of the town. And we didn't feel there was one person or one group that represented all 300 years. You know, that it's taken a lot of people to get us to where we are. And mm -hmm. they've all, you know, some are a little bit more in front, some are a little bit more behind the scenes. You know, they're of all ages, all ethnicities, and that's what we are as a town. Yes. It really is, and that's how we got where we are, and that's how we go forward. You know, yeah, it's, it's the regular Patriots Day events really work well into the 300. They're all just meshed very well together, and one right. really complemented the other. It yeah. was just really seamless. And yeah. one, one, the 300th made it all the more fun for the regular Patriots Day events and having the Patriots, having the parade on the Sunday, actually, I thought worked out very nicely. Yes. Um, and it gave us, it, 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 it's all, but, but it was fun, it was different, and yeah. it was, you know, it was just a nice, different twist right. to it. Yes. And, you know, the, to split it up over the Sunday and Monday, it was great. It, it just really worked out nice. All right, since we're in agreement that it was the 300th anniversary was so super great and was appreciated by the town and it was fun to do, fun to plan, to, mm -hmm. to, to include everybody, what do you have up your sleeve to top that for next year? Um, I can't really talk about it yet, but I do have something. I, you know me. Um, I do have something. Um, and if it works out, it will be great. It, we, we're not looking to top the 300th because no, that not was special. Top it, no, but. Um, but I do, you know, as I say to you, I need one or two new things to kind of keep it interesting. And I've got almost one. Um, hopefully I'll know that in the next month or so. Um, and working on number two, so. Um, but this is a book that was put out uh, just after 1975 and by Richard Dugas, Living With History. This is, some people in town have this. And we were lucky enough to get it. And he did a lot of pictures of Lexington and Concord and the surrounding area of that era. And there's white tricorn hat recipients Ooh. in here. Reverend Hanley, Louis Zaner, which was a great friend of ours, uh, which, you know, Lou Zaner was a very, very, um, very involved um, man in Lexington. He was a town treasurer for many years, and he um, was an eventual white tricon hat recipient, and uh, someone that we all knew very well, as well as Harold Hanley. He was the pastor at the Hancock Church, and I think believe he was chaplain of the Lexington Minutemen for a while, so he was a white tricon hat recipient in those days, and, um, and then I can, someone was, someone, and I didn't even know this picture was taken, but in my early years on the town celebrations committee, I was asked to give the Pledge of Allegiance on the green. And I, I did, and little did I realize, someone took my picture, wouldn't you know. <laughs> so here it is. Um, I just became a member of the celebrations committee the year before. And prior to that, I was attending meetings while I was in high school. So this picture is dated 1979. and. I'm in a very, 
very uh, classy plaid jacket, which I guess that was what you wore in those days, but uh, I was a police cadet on the police department then. And I've since, for those who don't know, I'm on the police department now. And this is Tom Raboyne, who was a patrolman, and I was riding with Tom, as it was on cruiser shifts. So Tom is saluting, and I'm giving the Pledge of Allegiance, and someone got the picture. So nice. it was a very nice thing, and we realized that it was in this book, so naturally we got the book, and we got Richard Dugas to autograph it. Mm -hmm. So we've had it right along, and it's been a nice little, nice little thing to bring and show a little bit, and there's been other pictures after I've gone through it of people in here that I do recognize. Nice. So it's just been a nice little you know, remembrance and a little bit of, you know, so my involvement on Celebrations Committee goes back, I think, actually, till the year 1976. So, and then I was appointed, I think, in 1978, when you're able to vote and registered voter, that's when they can appoint you, and been there ever since. So it was just a nice, um, nice gesture that I happened to make it into this book, little did we realize until someone told us about it. Very nice. Well, do you have any closing remarks or that you would like to share with the viewers? We are always looking for more people to join us. Um, as we said, you know, we're always planning, we're always working on something. Um, we think we're a fun committee. You mm -hmm. know, we all work well together. Um, and it, it just feels great to be able to do something where you're giving back, you know, to the town and to the, into the community. Um, so if anyone is interested, they can check in with um, Lynn Pease in the uh, Selectman's office for um, this little application you need to fill out. Mm -hmm. um, or you can come to any one of our meetings. Um, we do meet on um, Wednesday nights, um, but check the town website for what our meeting schedule is. Um, and we'd, we'd love to have people join us. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And always use the help. And it's, and it's fun. The whole idea of it, it's a, it's a, you plan fun events, so the meetings right. are... Uh, the meetings are fun, you know, there's, there's work involved, but then again, you see the fruits of your labor. Right, right. When those dates roll around in the calendar, you see the fruits of your labor. And you see everyone enjoying themselves and, you know, there it is. You have the, the support of the community. I mean, the com community appreciates all that the Town Celebrations Committee does mm -hmm. for Lexington and for people that, other than Lexingtonians. Absolutely. Yeah. So thank you very much. Thank you. We appreciate yeah, this. Was nice. This thank and you, Bob. Uh, thank you, Francine. Yeah. All right. Thank you. <laughs>